Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss basic lung volumes and the control of ventilation. I hope you enjoy. The lungs are vital organs which have the main role of exchanging gases with the outside world. And without them, life wouldn't be possible. First, let's talk about some important lung volumes. There are other lung volumes which are just as important. However, these are the basic ones that we'll be exploring in this video. The tidal volume is the volume of air that enters and leaves the lungs during normal, non-forced breathing. The vital lung capacity is the total inspiration and expiration a living person can forcefully perform. The inspiratory reserve volume is the volume of air that can fill the lungs during forced inspiration. The inspiratory capacity is a deep, forced inspiration from the lowest point of the tidal volume until maximum inspiration is reached. The expiratory reserve volume is the volume of air that can leave the lungs during forced expiration. The residual volume is the volume of air in the lungs that cannot be expired even after maximal expiration. The functional residual capacity is the volume of the lungs that combines maximum forced expiration together with the volume of the lungs that cannot be used. In other words, it's the residual volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. There's also the total lung volume, which, as the name suggests, it is the total volume of air in the lungs, including the residual volume. There are also important lung ratios which are used as diagnostic criteria. For example, forced expiratory lung volume in one second divided by forced vital capacity gives us important information about lung obstruction and restriction. Another important measurement is the peak expiratory flow rate, which is the maximum speed that air can be expired, and it is important to monitor conditions such as asthma. There are more methods and measurements to analyze lung function, however, they will not be discussed in this video. Now that we have talked about lung volumes, let's talk about the control of ventilation. Ventilation has to change in order to supply oxygen and remove carbon dioxide at varying rates. In this part of the video, we will discuss factors that influence ventilation and how they do it. The medulla of the brain plays an important role in ventilation, as it has two important respiratory groups, the dorsal respiratory group, which is mainly involved in inspiration, and the ventral respiratory group, which is mainly involved in expiration. These groups help control the rhythm of ventilation. Both of them send signals to the respiratory muscles, such as the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, in order to stimulate ventilation. These groups receive signals from areas that will be discussed now. These include higher brain centers, central chemoreceptors, peripheral chemoreceptors, and mechanoreceptors. As a quick side note, out of all the indicators that will be discussed in this section, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is the most important in the control of ventilation, as the partial pressure of CO2 should be kept at suitable ranges. Higher brain centers have some control over ventilation. For example, you can decide to hold your breath for some time. However, this control is not absolute, as at some point you will need to breathe. Other factors from higher brain centers can stimulate ventilation, for example, emotions such as anxiety. Central chemoreceptors are specialized cells in the medulla of the brain. They are sensitive to the pH of the cerebrospinal fluid. This means that changes in the pH of the cerebrospinal fluid affect ventilation. The brain is covered by the blood-brain barrier, which is impermeable to ions such as H+, and HCO3-, but permeable to CO2. This, together with the fact that the brain produces some CO2 through its natural metabolism, makes the partial pressure of CO2 in the cerebrospinal fluid a bit higher than in the blood and thus the pH a bit lower.
There are also peripheral chemoreceptors, which are the aortic body and the carotid body. These respond to changes in the partial pressure of CO2, blood pH, and the partial pressure of oxygen. In fact, the peripheral chemoreceptors are the only ones which respond to the partial pressure of oxygen. The carotid body has afferent nerve fibers, which send information to the brainstem through the carotid sinus nerve, while the aortic body sends information to the brainstem through the vagus nerve. There are mechanoreceptors in joints around the body, which means that movement, such as during exercise, can cause an increase in the ventilation rate. There are also important reflexes, however, only the herring brewer reflex will be discussed in this video. The herring brewer reflex is an inspiratory reflex that inhibits overinflation of the lungs, especially in newborns. When stretch receptors in smooth muscles of the airways are simulated, signals are sent to the brain and cause forced expiration. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. And also comment if you find any inaccuracies.